Upfront and outspoken with Bob Williams. If you love the Constitution, man is not free unless government is limited. If you love freedom, as government expands, liberty contracts. If you believe in personal responsibility, if you believe America is still the greatest nation on earth, then get ready for an experience you'll never forget. This is Upfront and Outspoken. Here's your host, Bob Williams. And good Monday morning. This is Upfront Outspoken. Of course, I'm your host, Bob Williams, with you here in Savannah. I'm going to give you a heads up right here, right now. I'm going to shake you up a little bit harder than I've been shaking you up before. Why? Because right now, at this particular time, if you are under the age of 18, get the hell away from the radio. You don't want to be here, and this is not for the pain of heart. Also, I want to remind all of my listeners that Alderman Tony Thomas was offered the opportunity to come onto my radio program right here on this show to refute the allegations levied against him regarding sexual assault. And that includes Josh, um, Josh, who was on here the show just uh, this past week, and my guest, yes, the guest, the guest which is being brought on by private investigator John Perry. Once again, John, I want to welcome you back to the show, and uh, please introduce your guest to all of us. All right. Thank you, Bob. Um, The person joining us on this call, his name is uh, Ray. Ray approached me during the course of my investigation when, this is after I had interviewed Josh, um, I was developing a list of, of names of of kids that had been sexually assaulted and i knew there was more than just one i knew josh was not an isolated incident but the media here in savannah was absolutely recovering you know refusing to cover the story at the time so i put it out there with putting up my own website that i put out what i had and within days i had so many people coming forward and ray was one of those people he came to me and um he told me, he's like, you know, John, I, I also have been uh, sexually abused by uh, Tony Thomas. And then it was, it was mind-blowing um, what went from there because, well, I don't want to get too much into his backstory, but that's how I met Ray the first time. All right. Now, Ray, I'm going to bring you on. And uh, the reason we are calling you Ray is because that is the name that uh, Tony Thomas and you would be the only two that would know, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, Ray, I want you to tell us a little bit about how you met Tony Thomas, how old were you, and I want you to tell us all the way up to you're about 16 years old of anything you had to do with Mr. Thomas. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a native Savannian. Um, I met Tony uh, when I was 14 years old at the movie theater on the south side. Um, I think it was Terra Cinema at the time. Um, this was, you know, uh, early 90s. I was 14, um, and a, a group of my friends and I were in line to see uh, some movies. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Um, and he bought us all drinks and uh, popcorn and and all that. And then, you know, uh, he was, he just threw out there like, hey, any of you guys want to make some extra money this summer? And I know, yes, of course. And uh, so he offered me a position uh, doing uh, some lawn care, basic, you know, weed, weed trimming and uh, cutting grass and raking leaves at uh, the uh, um, Windsor Forest swimming pool, or it's a community swimming pool, and uh, doing uh, lawn care at his house. And, uh, you know, I was 14 and, and 15 then, and, uh, you know, it just kind of progressed from there. Now, when you're saying it progressed from there, about what age were you at that time? Um, I was, 
I was 15 when 14. Uh, it's been so long ago. I'd say I wasn't driving yet. So, you know, I was still under the age of 16. I was 15. Okay. And at that time, uh, what, I want you to tell, be very specific. I want you to tell our audience exactly what happened. Um, we were riding in uh, his car, and um, he basically just pick, picked my hand. Uh, we were riding down... Uh, I think it was the Abercorn, um, and he just picked my hand up and put it on his uh, on his leg, on his thigh, and uh, I jerked away real quick, and I kind of looked at him, and, uh, you know, he pulled it back over there and sit it on him, uh, pulled my hand back and put it on him, and uh, he'd get angry, and, you know, he'd say, uh, you're my sweet baby now, and... Uh, All right, his exact words were, you're my sweet baby now. Yes. Now, you know... Pardon my uh, ignorance here, but I'm from the north. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm from the state of Missouri, but I'm not. I'm actually from the state of Wisconsin. So, you know, in Missouri, they say, you know, they're the show me state. So tell me exactly what you interpreted him saying that as. Well, you know, being young like that, when somebody says something to you like that, you kind of look at them in shock and, and awe because you really don't know what, what that is what that entails you know but uh i quickly found out that you know that meant meant that um he was going to be trying to go crazy on me <laughs> all right by uh, by saying a short time later how how long later um you know just every time i like he'd pick me up it was always you know come uh uh here come over here give give daddy a hug or you know give me some sugar now he's at, now you're you're 15 years old and he's asking you to give him a kiss, correct? Yes, sir. On the cheek, what? Yes, and then he'd like give me a, give me a kiss right there, and he'd point to his cheek. Okay. And he'd say like, "Come on, just give me a little peck right there," and you know you're like, "All right." So you give him a kiss, and he turns over and plants a plants one on you. All right. Planting it. What do you mean? Like sticking his big lips. on no, over be, your I, face. no, I don't want you laughing about this, uh, Ray, because the simple fact, this is very serious business here. I know. Where I, did he plant it? On my face, on my lips. All right, that's what I need to know. I mean, granted, it's going to be graphic, but we need to know the specifics because you are the only, you are the only one privy to those details other than Mr. Thomas. So right. in, order, in order to be very specific... I need you to be specific and keep a straight face in doing so, even though now it might seem funny. But well, uh, it's definitely not funny. It's one of the ways I, I cope with it. Okay, great. All right. Now, you, at this time when he was asking you to, to, do, to give him a kiss, to, to do that, how long after that did it become more and more sexual? Um, I just... Each time he'd pick me up, it kind of progress and progress and progress. And if you didn't, you know, he'd threaten like, "Well, I'm going to deduct that from your pay," um, you know, or you need to start finding a new job or, or something along those lines. Okay, so it over a progression of time, it started to get more involved. Correct? Yes, sir. And uh, he'd tell you, you know, if you tell somebody, I'm going to have to, I'll have to hurt you. He'd have to hurt you. Okay. Yeah. So that's the uh, normal And he'd tactic. always say, you know, I was a United States Army Ranger, and uh, I can make things happen. Well, I was an MP in the Army, and I could say that, but it sure in the hell ain't going to happen because I'm long out of the service. I mean, but, uh, you know, we're talking Tony Thomas here. He's going to use everything he can as an intimidation tactic to you to keep you quiet. And uh, now, John, I want to bring you in on this. You've heard what what ray has said to this point now i need you from your investigations how much of what he has said is accurate and if so how much farther did you go to make sure that what ray has been saying here and now is accurate well one of the first things that uh ray told me when we met was he's like He's very serious, you know, and he knew the conversation was being recorded. He, uh, you know, my wife was there taking notes, actually, just because I wanted witnesses to uh, let him know, un understand the gravity of what he was about ready to, 
to jump into. And he's like, listen, John, part of my defense mechanism is, is lying because I've had to be a chameleon because when I met Ray, um, he's in his 30s now. And as you just heard, his abuse started when he was 15 at the hands of Tony Thomas. And that's a long time. So the question I had was, why did you stay? And his response was, it's all I knew. So he warned me right up front, listen, my defense is, is lying. And so I don't want you to take what I say at face value. Please check it out. And he would tell a detail to a story. Like, you know, I've been, uh, I've been over here and, and, you know, I know the butler and I got his, his, his name and number. I'd be like, call him. Uh, I've been here and I have code to this gate. Let's go. And I was down at this bar, you know, and, okay, who's the bartender? Who do you know there? Well, right. I know this person. All right, now I'm going I'm to stop you right there. Of, of the places that he did say that you did go to, are you 100% convinced that he's accurate? I am. Well, you ask anything to be 100%. Well, let's let me say put it 90, this way. Let's 100% say 90%. of everything that he told me that I checked out, Right. A hundred percent of it has checked out. That's what I want to know. So a hundred percent of what you have checked out and from what he did tell you is accurate. Yes. All right. So in, in other words, that butler's phone number, that gate, those are that bartender. That is accurate. Yes. Everything I have been able to, to verify where, okay, give me the number right now. You okay. know, and sometimes... I would verify it with him right there. Okay. The gate in particular was, let's go. And we jumped in our vehicle. We drove out to the property. I punched in the gate code. The gate swings open. We turn around and leave. Because other things that he would tell me, I would go. I would do my own investigation. I wouldn't tell him that I was doing it. I wouldn't tell him when I was going. I wouldn't tell him that I'd done it. I would also do things like, uh, you know, the familiar idea of like a false flag or a red herring. I had some information. I would change it a little bit to where it wouldn't be accurate and ask him, say, hey, do you know this? None of those did he ever, oh, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, I know all about that. He never once jumped on any false information, even information I had that was true. And I'd remembered that he'd, said, he'd not said anything about, he's like, well, I don't know anything about that. So, I mean, and I you, knew it was true. I would bring that up. I was like, well, do you know anything about this? All right, no, so something, never heard of that. So as a typical investigator, as every investigator will, they're going to try to throw out a red herring to decipher the truth from the fantasy. And exactly. It's called vetting the witness. There you go. Exactly. And, okay, now, now Ray, I want to bring it back to you. All right, we, yes, st we stopped at, uh, at the time that you were 16. And... You, this has been going on until, from what I'm hearing, till not just too long ago. When did it finally end for you? I guess I was um, almost 30. So you're talking just a couple of years ago. Yes, sir. All right. So within that span of nearly 20 years, you know a lot of of things that only Tony will know. Right. So why did you not take this information to the police? Well, for one, I was scared. And actually, I did um, go to the uh, GBI and also went to the FBI. And what did they tell you? Um, well, um, the FBI or the GBI said that there's, um, you know, he said... I believe everything you're saying, you know, I, I've heard it, um, and you're not the first person I've heard it from, but we're, um, um, it's an ongoing investigation. All right, so they told you, and this was how many years ago? Uh, this was three years ago. All right, so two they- two years ago, I'm sorry. All right, so they told you back in 2013 that there is an ongoing investigation, and that investigation is specifically on Tony Thomas? Can you, can you say that again? Is the investigation that GBI said is ongoing, is yes, it against Tony Thomas? Yes, sir. 
All right. And I'm... the reason why is because it was outside of uh, the reason they couldn't do anything about it was it was outside of my statute of limitations. The same problem Josh Flowers had, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So when you were at GBI two years ago, the officer, I'm assuming, did a very thorough investigation. Am I correct? Yes, sir. How long were you, would you say you were there with the investigator? Hours. Hours. He took notes. Yeah, I, I drove um, 100 miles um, to go do this investigation. But I'm saying, I mean, the, the investigator, did he take notes? Did he videotape it? He, he recorded it. He took, you know, uh, he had a basically a spiral bound notebook, a fresh one. And uh, when it was all said and done, it was about three-fourths full. Okay. Uh, and now, John, I want to bring this back to you. All right. We know there's an ongoing investigation. Now, obviously, they have a ton of information there. And I'm sure you've been uh, snooping around, as, as all PIs do, you've been making the inquiries in the GBI as to why this investigation has not gone any farther. What have you been able to determine? Just a, the biggest thing is um, the statute of limitations. And it's, it's very difficult for the victims to approach the GBI. The same investigator who I believe was very sympathetic also said to me when I gave him a list of over 30 kids, and I, I want to be clear, this list that I gave him, I gave him the names of over 30 kids that I have at least two people who said this kid has been sexually abused. And, you know, Bob, I've been contacted and spoke to nine separate individuals that have told me very similar stories. I have not, other than Josh Flowers, who I did not know was a victim when I went to him, I have not um, actively sought these people out. So there was one exception that I text, you know, I, I told the person it was safe to come forward, and he did not react fondly, and I've never pushed, because that's, you know, I, I don't feel that, I, I'm not, I, you know, I've said it before, but I, I'm serious when I say that, I don't want to re-victimize these kids, so I was hoping that the GBI would be able to do it. The agent looked at me and said, well, these kids need to come in on their own, and when they have no legal recourse, what, you know, even if they came in, what, there's no good that's going to come of it. So they just feel, well, I'm not going to do anything. Now, on Friday, we know for a fact that uh, the Georgia legislators, legislation is going to be uh, voting on a new bill, which is called H.R. 17. We understand it also passed the, judici the Judiciary Committee. That bill, are you anticipating it to be passed by the both houses? I am hoping so, so much. And, and I, I tell you what, anybody who is in Georgia listening, if you have children or know somebody who does, or you are a children, a child at one time, so that's pretty much everybody, and you don't think that sexual predators should be able to victimize kids and get away with it simply because th this, this is the thing, Bob. These kids have five years from the time they turn 18 to come forward. And as you hear, the abuse sometimes continues for a long time because this is all they know this is the right. only way they know how to provide for themselves this is the only way they know how to survive now it's the same thing that you have when somebody's a rape victim and they let that person continue to rape them i now, mean it, it is there's been psychological study after psychological study to show this is not an uncommon thing they have five years to come forward well with and this, so our goal is to change that i'm sorry well, that's that's fine with this new legislation however it they have they have until they are 35 to actually uh, uh, file any kind of charges or two years from the time the legislation takes effect. Am I correct? Well, currently, the only way that it is is um, that uh, when uh, they have five years to come forward, and even the law as it currently is, is only at five years with a two-year window to go back and file if you're outside of the statute of limitation. So we are hoping that as this bill progresses, they can put some of the tough measures. Here's the thing. Here's the crazy thing about this bill. I know it's kind of a tangent, but it's not. It's all related. There is an active, paid, professional lobbyist who is lobbying against this bill and to weaken this bill who has four kids who have come out and accused him, the lobbyist, 
of being a sexual predator, but because they're outside of the statute of limitations, there's nothing the law can do. So don't you so, think? Don't you think that this lobbyist indeed is going to want this thing to be hush hush, so that way his victims uh, don't have the opportunity to come back after him? I mean, in his mind, as perverted as it is, he needs this bill not to go through. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And so that's the kind of thing that you have. And I'm not trying to say if you don't support this bill, you must clearly be a sexual predator. But I, I ask people. What logical reason is there to not support this bill? You know, there's still discovery. This isn't this isn't a, a, a free for all where it's going to open up. It, I understand there's a lot of senseless litigation, but when these kids only have five years to come forward, that is ridiculous. And the, and if this bill goes through and it is passed, how much teeth does it put back into the law? Well, right now. The statute that came out of the thing is still only five years. However, it has the two-year window for those who are outside the statute of limitation to go back and file. I am hoping and I'm asking on everybody that's in the state of Georgia or, you know, just here's a show to contact the state legislature, the state house, the state senators of Georgia and flood their inboxes and tell them not only pass it, but put teeth back into it because the five-year statute limitation it needs to go and 35 25 20 anything but five is so ridiculous now i want to bring it back uh to ray and and, and ray you know over the course of this wow almost 20 years obviously you've seen a lot of other things going on that you know where where it would once again prove that the information you give me is only known to yourself and mr thomas can you be very specific as to some of the uh, shall we say areas you and mr thomas went when you were underage um yes sir we've been to savannah day we've been to uh disney world we went to key west um, we've been, you know, uh, Tennessee, uh, you know, chasing snow, <laughs> uh, just all kinds of different places. You all right. And, and, and in those, some of those places, Disneyland, you know, like you said, Tennessee, the Florida Keys at this particular point, the relationship that was developed between you and Mr. Thomas was no longer an employer employee, but you were basically there to satisfy his sexual urges. Would that be correct in stating? Uh, well, I, I was an employee and I would, um, you know, he, he paid really well. He was paying me almost $30 an hour. But that's not what I asked. I asked that during the times that you were at any of these locations, did he or did he not try to actually sexually assault you? Yes or oh, no? Oh, well, yes, yes, he did. That's what I asked. You know, listen to the question very carefully, right? All right. Now, at Disneyland, at the Florida Keys, in Tennessee, were you the only person with Mr. Thomas when this happened? Yes or no? Uh, yes. And then sometimes there would be more than myself. There okay. Would be other so, kids my age. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me, you're telling my audience right now that there were times when you were not the only minor present? If that's correct. Okay. And these miners were there for the, I, 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 I hate saying this, but this is the only way I can, I can put it, were there for sexual gratification of Thomas. Yes, sir. It, was, it, start, it starts off as grooming. Like, you know, oh, let me get you a watch, or, you know, you need, you need a pair. Let me, let me dress you up. I'm going to take you shopping. And uh, haircuts, uh, you name it, you know, take you to get a, a pedicure or a, a a massage and uh it, it you know whatever whatever it would make you feel better he would uh go out of his way to uh help you out okay now I, i'm going to ask you again very specifically 
name one time and I want you to be very specific as to where it was and if you can remember how many people were in, ten, in attendance, both minors and adults, outside of the state of Georgia, where was the first time you can remember more than one person, you know, a group of youngsters and more than one adult that were actively participating in this? Uh, Key West. Key West. All right. So here you are, a minor. Now, I want to get this very out there, folks, right flat out. By what Ray just said, he was taken across state line into Florida, into the Key West, violating federal law, and yet the feds won't do nothing. John, what have you found out from the feds, if anything? Um... The FBI has not been forthcoming with what they're going to do. The GBI has the investigation right now, and through not through the current investigator, but other ones have expressed that their fear is the GBI is going to have to do all the legwork. The FBI s swoops in, so there's this. Yeah, I know. It's, it's very it's yeah, a, it's very it's difficult because of the statute of limitation. So. To go forward with the investigation, it, it you know, they're they're afraid that there's going to be a territorial issue. Right, they, that always is when you got the feds. But but I but I'm saying, you know, Ray just got done saying right here that him and several others were taken across state line. These are minors. They, whoever Thomas was associated with at that particular time, and Thomas was part of this. He violated federal law, and I cannot fathom the fact that the federal government, even though Georgia law says that, you know, it's beyond the statute of limitations, feds don't say, hey, we've got something here. Well, and, and I want to I touch on something, because I know sexual abuse is, is difficult sometimes. It turns into a he said, she said, or in this case, a he said, he said. One thing that I want to bring out uh, that actually first drew me to this was I was aware of tax money, taxpayer money, going to provide alcohol to young men under 21. And the reason I bring that up is because that's battery. Right. And this happened, you know, in front of our current mayor on several occasions. Well, that's also classified as contrib contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Yeah. Okay, the, the thing is, you just got done saying this was going on in front of the mayor. The mayor was seeing this and did nothing? No, a lot of times. Ray, Maybe she was, yeah, alderman at the time. Okay, so she was an alderman. But, but now she's the mayor of your esteemed city, and I use that term very rhetorically, the fact that even as a alderman, she should have known, you know, number one, these are minors. Number two, it's my obligation as a minor to get these people out of here because they are not supposed to be drinking alcohol. And yet she as an alderman did nothing. Am I right? You're correct. Now, she go ahead. A, go ahead. She made a funny comment. I went to uh, the Savannah Chatham Day in Atlanta and uh with uh with tony and all the other aldermen um from savannah uh, along with the county commissioners and stuff and we all had uh got into this uh you know 12 passenger van and uh, uh edna made this comment and she said tony when are you going to have uh find you somebody that's old enough to drive you home from the bar <laughs> and i said i looked at her i said well Ma'am, I can drive. I just look real young. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, all right. So, so the alderman, which is now Mayor Jackson, jokingly told Tony, when are you going to get somebody old enough to drive you home? Yes. And she was, and so she was very aware of what was going on. Now, at these meetings, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know if I want to call them a meeting or, or a fiasco. I'm assuming that Tony was there 
quote unquote for business, correct? Yes, sir. This was a, uh, you know, they, uh, Savannah Chatham Day, um, they discussed legislation and uh, basically try to bring money into Savannah. Well, it seems the money they're bringing in is pretty dirty. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to, I hate to say that, but it, it looks like that. Now, the the you yourself, like you said, you this had had has happened many times across state line, and uh, you know, you 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 bring up a lot of interesting things, but you know, like the, the fact that you went to Disneyland, the fact you went to the Florida Keys. When you went to Disneyland or when you went to the Florida Keys, was it on the taxpayer's dime? Um, um, only when I went to uh, to Atlanta. Okay, want to tell me about that and one? I w that was the Savannah Chatham Day, and then I was invited to the National League of Cities as well. Um, where where was that held at? That was um, one of them was in California, and then the next one I was invited to was. I would say, um, I think it was either, I believe it was in Oregon. When you went Washington when, State. Okay, when you went to the one in California, how old were you? I didn't go. I did oh, not you did go. not go, okay. And, you know, he said, oh, you, come on, you can drop what you're doing. You're not doing anything. I, it, it's all taken care of. I got your plane ticket and, um, and everything. You just, you just come rob with us. But that never happened. No, sir. Okay, now what about the one that you said it was uh, in the Northwest? Um, no, I didn't go to that one either. I always declined those, but he did take uh, uh, young guys with him. So he always has a young guy at his side, even oh. now while he's in D.C.? No, you got it. Okay, all right. So, and, and like you said, this, this has been going on for several years, and, it, and the, the relationship ended how? Well, you know, I was... He would basically have me recruit young guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, now you're becoming his pimp? Yes, sir. Um, but um, he, I guess, he, he, you know, he'd say, uh, you know, why don't you go, uh, I want that one over there. I was, you know, I was his bait trap, and he'd have me, uh, you know, you can have the woman. I just want a boyfriend. And, uh you know, I'm like, okay. So you were the bait. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So you were the bait that he threw out there to get to get get his jollies off with the guy. Right, and you know, like the young, the, what he, what he really likes is, you know, young. If if they're not young, blonde headed, blue eyed kids, then he likes uh, um, uh, young rangers. And you know, he would even you know we'd go. Savannah's got the big you know, uh, Ranger Battalion here. And um, my grandfather was a, uh, was in the military, and uh, a lot of my family were in the military, but then he, uh, you know, would approach all these guys, you know, downtown, and he'd go, I was a Ranger in Panama. This is my friend right here. And uh, he was a Ranger, and I'm like, no, actually, I wasn't. I'm not, not a Ranger. <laughs> okay, now, John, you found out some very interesting things about, uh, about uh, Tony. And the fact of a foundation that he set up and that he's been bilking money off of. Want to tell us about it? Um, this was, it's been a while now. It was back in the 90s. It was the first Ranger Foundation. And it was supposed to be raising money for fallen Rangers. And he actually wrote a bad check off of that to pay for some work. Uh, we're, on we're, the we're Windsor getting, Forest we're getting Community a little, Center. We're getting a little bit of an echo here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can hear something on a time delay, uh, you know, something that's close to your mic. All right, go go ahead. Okay. Um, that better now? Yeah, that's a lot better. Go ahead. Excellent. Well, he was, he was using, he had two not-for-profits. One was the Windsor Forest Community Center, which how he got that is its story in and of itself. He literally stole this pool from the community. And then he had the First Ranger Foundation where he's out there soliciting donations. He wrote a bad check to the pool company that came out and did a lot of repairs on the Windsor Forest Community Center. He wrote a bad check off of the First Ranger Foundation charity to pay for the other charity. 
Which, if I did that, I would probably be in jail. You definitely. The, you know, you're talking anything that's over a certain dollar amount becomes a felony. Um, now it the, was in the thousands. So I believe that, it was around six thousand dollars. That would make it a felony. That would that would make it a felony. Now, the apparently, question, unless you're an alderman. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, let's say uh, unless you're Tony Thompson, you know, Tony Thomas. I mean, you, you get away with a lot of stuff then. I guess maybe not anymore. All right, but anyhow, the the <coughs> question I have for you is, you know, we're hearing that Mr. Thomas is so. You know, keen. I was a ranger. I was this. I was that. I'm, I'm Mr. High and Mighty. Did you ever have a chance to check into his actual military status? He's never been in the Rangers. And in fact, here's a funny thing. There is a General Tony Thomas. And if you dig into that General Tony Thomas, you found out that uh, this General Tony Thomas was in Panama. That a lot of the stories that Alderman Thomas would tell appear to simply be lifted from this real General Tony Thomas's so, experience. So let me get this right. Tony Thomas, Alderman Tony Thomas is out there telling everybody I was in the U.S. Rangers when in fact he's uh, stealing the life of General Tony Thomas, who was actually in the Rangers. Yes, and it's funny the way he does it. Anybody who would verify it, like a reporter, well, you know, I, I just have a great love for the military. Wait a minute, but, he, but, as, but, he's, but he's as Ray telling. and other people, Ray is far from my only source on this. Tony uh, Alderman Thomas actually would carry prestige coins, which I'm hoping that you know, if you served in the military, you know what a prestige coin is. And he would present these coins and tell this story of how he was in, you know, Ray can tell it much clearer and much more accurate, but he would tell this not to people who are likely to verify it. And I've said this from the beginning, um, Alderman Thomas is a very sophisticated sexual predator. He has his shtick down. He has this pattern. People ask me all the time, why do you believe this? Because these kids that have come to me don't know the other ones exist. Or if they know, they don't know that they're victims as well. And the pattern repeats itself over and over and over. You know, that, that's, you know what's disturbing to me is, is I served in the military myself. I served with the 502nd MP Company, Fort Hood, Texas, and then I was later transferred to 502nd SMT. Uh, but the point is, I can prove my military service with what is commonly referred to as a DD-214. Now, if anybody would come up to Thomas and listen to the story, anybody that's been in the military, especially if they were in the military during Panama, you would think that they would come up and say, whoa, wait a minute here. Let's see your, your paperwork here, guy, because I, I, I'm having a hard time buying what your story. I mean, it hasn't anybody, I mean, any news service, any anybody, question him on his actual military service well this is the thing he doesn't do it to somebody who has the chance that they would check it out but they're he but does he, it in the bars he does it to 15 year old kids he does it to people who are vulnerable and by the time they realize and they start to figure out well i don't think you're a ranger well tony's already getting what he really wants from him yeah, perfect grooming material. Perfect grooming material. Now, Ray, I want to bring it back to you. Now, you evidently have heard Tony's line about being in the Rangers. What, ha you know, what's, uh, what are some of the things that only you and he would know that is contained within his story? That he, um, you know, can I give you an, like a instance or yeah, how he yeah how he I, does it yeah i want you to give me an instance and then i want you to tell me exactly how he would do it but make sure you include details that only you and he would know because you were there right he you know we're, would stand out in front of uh wild wings cafe which is in city market downtown and uh the uh all the uh military folks would you know they're in and out of the door right there because they always have live music 
and uh, he would look down at their arms, and if they had uh, one of those little black bands, he'd go, uh, "Oh, you're uh, you're in, you're in battalion," and they'd say, oh, "Yes, sir." And he goes, "Oh, well, uh, you know, I I was a ranger. Um, I was in Bravo Company, First uh, Battalion, Seventy um, Fifth Regiment. I did. I went through RIP, and uh, you know, I served in Panama. I played uh, ACDC for uh, Manuel Noriega." Okay, we all know that part of what you're saying is true. In fact, uh, when Noriega was surrounded in the uh, cathedral, that's exactly what they were doing. They were pumping ACDC into it. Um, you, know, um, you know, what you're saying, you know, it sounds to the average person, okay, well, this guy is legit. But, it, you know, I, I'm encouraging everybody, you know, Ray is being very specific here as to the exact location this is happening to and the exact things that, that Mr. Thomas is saying, which he cannot verify by, by documentation. You know, has, from your investigation, John, has Tony Thomas ever been in the military, the guard, any military unit whatsoever? No. He's never been in the military, never been a regular Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, you know, Coast Guard, never in the National Guards, never in any of that. Nothing. Can I, can I add something? Go ahead. His, all his combat experience is off the military channel. I can, boy, I'll tell you what, you know, I wish, wish my military experience came off of that. You know, eight weeks of boot camp, eight weeks of basic training. I wish my experience came off of the history of the combat channel. Uh, you know the the you know the but the thing is, is what's really disturbing is he still goes back to this same uh, area, correct? Or yes, sir. And you know he carries this yellow Ranger card in his wallet. Wait, wait. You can get that by going to to any. Uh, well, there's a company right there in Florida that'll produce that card. Really. Well, yeah, it's, it's called got Maxell. the Ranger Creed on the back, and you know, yeah. somebody will uh, like call him out, like say, "All right, what does Ranger stand for?" And uh, you know, he'll instead of doing the abbreviated recognize, recognizing, acknowledging, never gallantly, energetically, and readily, he'll do the whole, you know, recognizing my chosen profession. He'll go through the whole, the whole spiel, and you know, I have heard it so many times from him. I can just about do it in my sleep, but well, the you thing, know, he, the he, thing. Uh, he, he'll cram that down to your your throat, even if you don't believe him. He'll just say, "Oh, I'm a, I'm telling you, I'm a ranger." The thing is, is I can go to this company called Maxell out of Florida. Okay, they make replica guns. They give uh, you know I'll pass IDs if you carry a firearm. They can give you the permit to you know carry it with you. And 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 if you look in their catalog, they've got ones for the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Rangers. You know, you're, you know, they've got them. They've got these ID cards. You know, it makes me wonder, maybe he didn't send his 25 or 30 bucks to them and, and got the thing. So here we have a guy out there who not only is pretending to be a former military member who is actually boasting about it, showing this card that is worthless to veterans who served our country. And, you know, I'm going to tell everybody out there, if you're a veteran, don't don't believe this guy. Turn him in because you cannot impersonate a veteran. Did, did anybody realize this? It is it is illegal to impersonate a veteran and say you have combat experience on fraudulent credentials. Does anybody realize that or is, it, or is everybody out there in Radio Land that stupid? Oh, my God. God, this is getting deeper and deeper. Now, now, Ray, you know, the other thing is, is when, I, I, God, I, I, there's so much information coming out, and I know we don't have a whole lot of time, but the, the, the thing is, we've only got like about 15 minutes to go here, but the, the, the thing that's disturbing to me is you did, I, I'm not going to say disturbing. In fact, I, I praise you for the fact that you were able to garner the, the, the courage to break away from, uh, from Thomas. How were you actually able to say, this is it, I'm done? 
I found my opportunity and uh, I took it. I was able to get out and break, you know, break my chains uh, away from him. I was tired of, you know, uh, basically being his, you know, um, kind of being his lackey. Yeah, and you know, you know, I I would have to vouch for him. Yeah, you know, da 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 da, because you know, as he always says, Daddy gets what Daddy wants, and uh, you know, I was just tired of being. I was not proud of what I was doing. I was not proud of the crowd I was hanging around or the his friends, his everything about him. It's just is awful. He's one hundred percent devil. Now, now the question I have to ask you is the same question I asked Josh. Okay, now since the since you broke, you severed the ties. I am going to ask you, and I want you to be very clear. And if you have anything that might be held that somebody could say uh, that they could turn around and blindside you with, I need you to come perfectly clear, perfectly honest, in coming coming clear. Let's clear the table. Since the time that you broke away from Mr. Thomas. Have you had any police contacts? If so, to what nature and to what degree? Uh, police contact is in uh, arrest. In, uh, any arrest? type of any type of a arrest, any type of a pending litigation. Oh, um, yes, I, I went to. Uh, I had a criminal trespass uh, charge brought against me, but it was dismissed. That is the only thing on your record at all. Yes, sir. And it's not even there. <laughs> all right. Now, John, you you know, I know you. You're going to do a background check. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to run a, a, a police check on him. Is what he's saying accurate? Yes. All right. So the only thing that was S Yeah, there since he broke away from Tony Thomas and even this you know i know there was i'm not going to drag that out because it was while he was with tony there was things that had gone on um like you said he was running with the round crowd he was making bad decisions and if you want to talk to him about that i have no problem i'm interested in his behavior since he broke away and i was aware and honestly um if it's okay with ray to share just a little bit of the backstory about the criminal trespass Okay, um, drinking, arguing with his girlfriend. Okay. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's what it amount, amounted to that night. All right. Now, now, Ray. And I'm, it was non-domestic. Okay. Now, Ray, I'm going to ask you, um, you know, prior to you breaking away, obviously you had a few run-ins with the law. Am I correct? No, I've never even had a speeding ticket. Okay. There. That's See, that, see the implication that John had was that you did have a few, and I wanted to get it right from you. So during your entire lifetime, from the time that you first, you know, we're going to say from the time that you were 14 when you first met, met, met you know, this uh, nutcase till just a few years ago, and even now, you have a, well, almost stellar uh, police record, correct? Right. I've, no, I've only been, um, I mean, stupid things but not i've never been in jail other than for criminal trespass all right and even that was later dismissed that was dismissed okay all right you know you know john i'm certain i'm certain you're gonna you want you know why i asked that question don't you oh they'll be doing uh, background checks and pulling records and trying to discredit him and i've had people say stuff about chris and i was like i understand yeah he already told me about that now the other question i have for you uh, Ray is the fact that just a couple of days ago okay now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rattle your brains a little bit here just a couple of days ago on Friday I believe it was you were in a restaurant you would you please tell or a bar or, or whatever you want to call it will you please tell us where you were and what happened is this for me or for John this is for you Ray okay um, I was there, and uh, I um, where I was, where exactly were you? I was at Spanky's on the south side. Okay, and Tony's actually not allowed to go into Spanky's. Okay, um, but what but what transpired? I was sitting there and um, having a chicken finger basket and a sweet tea and uh, some of uh, Tony's 
uh, young, younger friends, younger grooming guys or whatever you want to call them, um, were in there and I actually saw, uh, one of, it was, uh, Tony's campaign manager. Who was that? Um, I, he's got, I don't really know his, his, his name. Um, I'm I know sure exactly John does. what he looks like though. I, I'm I mean, sure John knows who it is, but go ahead. Um, and you know, I, I saw him and, you know, when I went to Savannah day, we were at the hard rock, uh, restaurant, you know, talking with one another and, um, we were in there and, uh, these guys came in and then they just, you know, kind of, they surrounded me and, uh, they were not happy with, uh, with me because of, uh, of this whole Tony thing. Now this is what happened on Friday, correct? Yes, sir. All right, so the campaign manager of Tony Thomas's was in this uh, establishment. Obviously, something transpired where he must have seen you or, or these cronies of Tony saw you. And a few minutes later, how, how long would you say, 10, 15, 20 minutes later? About 15 minutes. About 15 minutes, you were approached by how many people? Um, there was four individuals there. So there were four people that did come up, that did approach you, and what did they say exactly? Um, they're going to beat my ass. Those are their exact words. That's, that's their exact words. Did they say why they were going to? Yeah, for um, for trying to get Tony in trouble. He, he got himself in trouble. How can you get him in deeper trouble than he's already in, is what I'd like to know. Well... Exactly, um, and you know they were. We're gonna slash your tires. You know we're gonna make life hard for you, and um, you know I carry a weapon. And uh, that night I just didn't have it. All right, now when you say you're carrying a weapon, what type of weapon are we talking about? Are we talking a pistol? Are we talking a knife? What are we talking? We're talking about a Glock. All right, are you licensed to carry it? I have a concealed weapons permit. Okay. Uh, that's what I want to make sure because, like I said, all right, you know, I I want to I I want all the cards. I don't want it. I don't want to be blindsided later by something here. Now, uh, John Ray said it was Tony's campaign manager in this establishment. Who is his campaign manager? I will be um. Hang on one second. Uh, I know the first name for sure is Dave. I'm not sure of the, the spelling of the last. And that's, I, I, I got to admit, and, you know, all cards on the table, I did not enter the restaurant there. But I, you know, Chris contacted me, and I did go up there and make sure he made it to his vehicle safely. All right, so what Chris did was, Chris, now that's, uh, Ray, oh, excuse me, sorry about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking getting, at I'm, notes. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm getting all, all everything confused. I, I've got somebody else on my mind that i got to bring on uh, a couple days, Chris Gantry. But, Ray, uh, the, the thing is, is that when this happened, when this did occur, what was your first instinct to do? What I mean, did you uh, go tell somebody what was going on, or did you just kind of you know, pick up the phone and immediately call John? What did you do? No, I moved uh, from where I was in the restaurant to the bar where there was more people. There was, I was really the only table um, there. It was kind of late. I was probably the last table before the restaurant, you know, was closing. And I came in there. I was starving, and uh, I wanted to get something uh, pretty quick. And chicken fingers are delicious at Spanky's. <laughs> I have never had the opportunity to be there, but under the circumstances, I might want to avoid it. Uh, but. Uh, you, the the thing is is you you've been very very precise that you went to the uh, GBI you've talked to the feds you have you ever taken your information to the local media I'm talking the newspapers radio stations TV stations have you ever taken it to them I have and I what did an, I did an interview they you did a video and um, uh, it was about an hour long and uh, you know, they, it's just Savannah, and, you know, they were going to, something happened, and they just wouldn't wouldn't do it, and it was over their heads, or the guys, you know, in bed with Tony, or, or something. I what? mean, it's, this whole city's corrupt. There, there's nothing in this city that's 
that's good, really. What except station, for some of the people. What station was it that you went to and they did the video? I believe it was WJCL or, or no WSAV. Yeah, it was WSAV. The now guy, uh, the reporter's name was Tracy. Now, now here's the thing: you're the second person that's come across and told us that SAV did the recording but never aired the story. John, am I right on that? I, am I hearing this right? Josh went to them, and now Ray? Yes. And both. They now have two victims who have come forth, have it on video, but they still s are sitting on this? It's, it's political. And I want to be clear, the reporters themselves have tried and tried and tried and been in contact and it keeps getting shut down and I don't know who higher up has that ability but that's where the that's where the roadblock is but why can't they take their tapes their story and take it somewhere else what's preventing them from doing it I mean we heard about it all the way over here in Oklahoma and I'm gonna admit you know I was questioned by uh, an individual on Facebook as to why am I so concerned about Savannah when the question is be should be is why should I not be concerned? I'm a journalist. It's my responsibility to get the facts, to get the story together, to air it, no matter who it hurts, no matter wh you know what's going to be said, and leave it for the court of public opinion to decide what they're going to do. What I am intolerant of is media that are right there on the scene, has the story, but refuses to do anything. You know, I, that's my rant, I guess you could say. But it, it's, it's getting, it, it, it's, this is intolerable. It really is. Well, Bob, I think that for those of us that live here, the fact is the problem, it just seems insurmountable. It seems when you're faced with this level of corruption, I mean, for crying out loud, our mayor, our now mayor, Edna Jackson, has known about this for years. I I provided the very first time I was on, I provided you with the audio of her violating Georgia law in order to force me to give her my entire contact information. Right, which is a violation of the elections procedure, election committee's procedures. You know, well, you, you, you know, that letter from the uh, uh, Georgia Department of Law was very specific on that. Uh, you know, I, I, we've only got about uh, three minutes to go here, and I'm, I'm going to ask Ray, if this law, H.R. 17, passes and therefore opens the window for you as well as for Josh, I mean, I've got Josh's answer, but I need to hear from you. If the law passes, if the governor signs it, Will you or will you not go down and file a complaint? I'll be there the next day. All right. There you go, folks. You know, once again, Ray, I thank you for coming on. John, you too. I want you guys to hang on for just a moment. Everybody else. That's right, time for me to get out of here. Stay tuned because coming up next, right after NPR News, the one, the only, Ed Till will be with you all the way until 4 o'clock. Until tomorrow at 6 a.m., this is Bob Williams. Take care of yourselves.